So here we have a very sweet about one year old gecko. And unfortunately, this little girl has a case of gout. Um, it, and we can see that she has these uh, swellings on her limbs. Um, and underneath the surface, you can almost kind of imagine that you see lighter deposits underneath there. And that's because the what gout is, is a deposit of uric acid, which looks very white um, if you were to you know, open it, this up surgically. Um, and so this condition is very, very painful um, and progressive. When we first saw this little girl, it was just affecting one limb and she was you know, a bit uncomfortable on that. And now it's just kind of progressed as it tends to do. Um, and it usually is due to poor husbandry, which is unfortunate because this little girl work, uh, lives with family that takes very good care of her, but she was rescued from a situation where the husbandry was not great. Um, and so, uh, yeah, unfortunately she developed this disease before she even came into their care. Um, but that is a, a disease that's not wildly uncommon in reptiles, and so I think important to be aware of. All right. These are some necropsy images of a different animal, a young bearded dragon. And you can see the little white urate or uh, uric acid precipitates. Uh, they're called tophi um, in the joints here, the elbow and the carpus. These uh, little deposits are much softer than they appear in the picture, uh, but they cause a ton of pain. Um, in, in these little guys. And, the, and this can build up in not only the joints, but in the viscera as well. They can form in the kidneys and elsewhere. Uh, like I had mentioned, this is generally a disease of poor husbandry, although sometimes there are drugs that um, might contribute. Um, most common predisposing factors are dehydration um, and uh, poor diet in certain animals that have a, a a diet that contains a lot of these kinds of uh, compounds that build up. Um, also, poor renal function, um, which might be a result of various uh, aspects of husbandry as well. So really a usually fairly preventable disease. Um, and unfortunately, by the time you see this in most cases, you know, because these animals aren't getting routine lab work in a lot of cases, you're not identifying that they have high uric acid in the bloodstream before they start to form these deposits. Unfortunately, you're usually finding them at the time that the patient is being brought in for lameness or a swelling or something, and you identify it as, a, uh, as gout. And at that point, there's not a lot you can do. You can put them on various medications like allopurinol to try and reduce the uric acid. Um, you could theoretically do surgery to uh, flush this material out of the joints, but really um, I've never had any of these patients respond much to anything. Uh, when I identify this problem, I typically tell the people that the prognosis is really basically grave. Um, ultimately, um, and I put them on some pain medications to hopefully help for a little bit of time uh, if they're not ready to euthanize the pet at that time, and then invariably they come back um, looking like uh, this poor uh, gecko did and just being in a lot of pain and elect to euthanize at that time. So once again, an example of husbandry playing an extremely important role in um, exotic animal uh, care, and especially for reptiles. Anyway, I hope you find this information helpful. Um, if you do, uh, please like and subscribe to our channel um, and feel free to reach out if there are any topics that you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching.